After visiting multiple farms to learn about on-farm composting in Pennsylvania, Capital RC&D visited Rodale Institute and met with Dr. Gladys Sonati, Director of Vegetable Systems Trial, and Rick Carr, Compost Production Specialist, to learn about their current research. Uh, the research I do here at Rodale Institute uh, entails uh, using amendments, organic amendments, to improve the soil organic matter, such as compost and compost extracts, as well as using other fertilizers, organic fertilizers. Mainly I work on vegetable systems, uh, meaning that how we can improve the soil health to improve the soil and the plant health, and usually we are trying to get more dense nutrient plants and fruits and vegetables to improve the human health. In a recent study that I have done at Rodale Institute, I formulated a compost that really improves the weed uh, suppression uh, percent-wise. And that means that some of those big weeds that we don't like in the field, and they are competing with plants, this was something that I thought it, we need to find a way for it, other than just mowing or uh, cultivation. So working with a grower who usually um, cultivates his soil. He was very interested to know if he could move slowly into no-till and reduce till. And, but the most biggest issue for organic grower is, is the weeds. Weeds, they, they really grow there. If you don't really, especially with lettuce, which is really requires a short period of time and cabbage. And so he said, well, is there a way you can help us with this compost? So I formulated a compost compost extract, in fact, to apply there. And we compared it to his standard method, which is cultivation. And so the, the compost I prepared, it had um, three, 30%. 30% of wood chips and straw, and then 50% of the tomato uh, plants recycled at was the end of the season, so we recycled those, as well as sunflower, and then we added uh, alfalfa in 20%. The alfalfa, it means that the high nitrogen. So we put the browns, we put the, uh, the greens and the high greens. And I did um, the compost in, in uh, these components in layers as a lasagna. And then I flipped them again and monitored their water and their temperature. And then I cured them for three months to build the, the fungi in it and the nematodes. And so what happens uh, to compare the cultivation, which is usually breaking that soil, uh, we are trying to reduce this uh, cultivation by applying compost extract. Now, I took that compost after it is cured. I send it to Penn State University to assess their nutrients. Also, I send them towards lab to do the assessment of the microorganisms. And from the diversity, it was 1.5, which is excellent diversity of microorganisms in them. And so we applied that in a way together with the, with the grower. Uh, we were partnering with the grower. What we did, we, we prepared a compost extract and that in the ratio of one to three, meaning one ratio of the compost itself and three parts of it is water. And so we aerated that by using a bubbler with the water and we uh, let it go over 24 hours. And now you could use water from the tap or from anywhere, but make sure that it is not chlorinated because we add chlorine to the water. The best way to remove this chlorine is just start with the water, bubble it for let's say a few hours, that chlorine will evaporate and then your water is ready. Because the more you keep that uh, water chlorinated, what happens is that you are applying chlorine, which is building part of your salt accumulation in, in your compost. So this way, it is better to aerate your water a little bit and then add your compost into that um, uh, bucket, let's say, five gallon bucket and do the bubbling overnight and then you screen it and then you can apply it. What we found in that research that the compost extract with the one to three dilutions, it reduced the weed expression, especially for the, uh, the uh, Canadian thistle by 65%. And the other one was the ragweed by 53%. Canadian thistle is pretty known to be really vigorous and it is perennial and really uh, uh, can take over the plant itself. But what it, does, it did, it really suppressed the expression of it when we compared it to the area where it is cultivated. 
the plants continue to grow in the cultivated area, but in the area where it received this compost extract, they were not growing as fast. It is a part of it that some of them, they did not continue to germinate, and some of them, they did not continue to grow, meaning allowing the plant to take over and start growing faster than the weed itself. Especially this really helped us in cabbage and lettuce, where we find a huge increase in the cabbage and in the uh, lettuce as well. One of my ongoing projects at Rodeo Institute is to create a novel seed treatment application that can be used to suppress soil-borne plant pathogens. For those that have worked in greenhouses or do direct seeding out in the field, know a lot about damping off, where uh, caused by a number of different pathogens uh, that can be a problem and reduce the yields very quickly. And so uh, there are plenty of different uh, conventional uh, treatments that you can use to suppress those pathogens, uh, but in organics we're not allowed to use that. So what I'm trying to do is use the activities of microorganisms from compost uh, to suppress some of these plant pathogens. Uh, so what I have here is cucumber seeds and they're uh, at different rates of uh, the seed treatment that I created. The seed treatment, the way I produce it, is to take compost uh, and I could either create a compost tea out of it or I could just use the solid material but I freeze it, either the liquid or solid version. I'm going to freeze that and then freeze dry it into a very fine powder. And that's what this vial is. It turns into a dust almost. And I'm going to take that dust and apply it to the seed surface using standard seed treatment technologies. What we're still trying to figure out now is if we can apply that to the seed surface and will that have the same effect on disease suppression. And so some of this ongoing work is going to be testing the powder at different rates of application, different build-up rates on the seed surface and that's what this is representing is three different rates right here with plain cucumber seeds here and we're going to test that on different pathogens as well as different rates to see if we can uh, indeed suppress plant diseases. Recently uh, I started working on uh, um, formulating a compost and compost extract uh, with the targeting the pest management. And in this case, I had worked on potato and mostly the Colorado potato beetle is our concern and the concern of many organic growers. So uh, keeping in mind that we, uh, any organic grower, that they, although they are applying any organic pesticides, these things becoming very costly and insects get used to the pesticides and more and more you have to add more pesticides and varieties but most of these organic pesticides, despite they have their actions, it is very short uh, life. It also affects the pollinators and the butterflies and all other insects that really helpful for our pollination. And so with that, I had in mind that how can I formulate a compost or a compost extract that really can target the Colorado beetle and so it will not defoliate the plant. Also taking into consideration uh, impacting the early leaf miner that really, uh, sorry, the early uh, leaf blight that comes in the beginning of the season and may destroy the whole potato plant. So taking these two things into consideration, I formulated a compost that uh, I used for compost extract. What was made of, it is the straw, the wheat straw, organic, and we got the uh, wood chips. We put sunflower and soybean, as well as some remnants of the plant material we have on the garden here, as well as uh, we, at the beginning of the fall season, we have to take some of the cattail. So we took all these leaves and put them all together and I made the mix. The idea is how I can improve the quality of this compost to have more of material that can uh, affect the uh, pupa of the Colorado beetle and will not allow it to grow more or it will really does not allow uh, the, um, to feed more on the, the plant material. Currently, we don't have uh, the results, but in the future, we are gonna 
uh, provide these results and uh, we, you will see them on our website and you will find a link for that. To learn more about their research, visit RodaleInstitute.org. Each farm in Pennsylvania has specific site considerations that must be taken into account when developing on-farm composting systems. Contact Pennsylvania's Department of Environmental Protection to learn more about regulations and contact USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service for technical assistance.